Hey, uh, what a closed captioning? It's pretty neat. I don't know. Well, <laughs> to an extent, you can understand. <laughs> I was listening to a transcript of a senior college class I missed last week in this whole area. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> Luckily, I was in the audience. Thank goodness. Last check we're expecting, John. I had that all arranged for you to ask that name to show up like that. Brandon and John. So it's going to be a good one. Well, John isn't here. Well, I'm saying now that George is gone. Oh, oh. Yeah. Um, whoever wants it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, a conversation around the time. And, and select board also. <laughs> yeah, they have to, they have to be the appointment. Yeah. If it's just alternate appointment. Okay. We have two applications on the agenda for tonight, and they are um, both for the provisions of Article 9, which is the Commonwealth Industrial Infrastructure District um, section. And um, I thought it probably would be a good idea just to spend a few minutes at the beginning talking about that Article 9 and the provisions of Article 9, because as you all know, this is not a section uh, that has actually been implemented before. Um, this section has existed in the ordinance for, for quite a while, but there have been no applications that have been submitted under these under this provision. So it is a little bit different, um, not radically, but it is a bit different in several respects from what we usually do. Um, so this um, Article 9 gives an opportunity for applicants to uh, come forward with proposals for commercial, industrial, or infrastructure projects that are greater than 5,000 square feet cumulative on the structures. And um, otherwise, uh, the ordinance prohibits um, developments of greater than 5,000 square feet. So this, this is the provision that allows that to go forward, provided they can meet some um, it's a two-step process under Article 9, uh, the first step being that the applicant would come forward and apply for a, a redesignation of the district to commercial industrial infrastructure. And if that uh, is achieved successfully, uh, the second step is the regular site review process that we would normally go through for projects uh, when applicants come forward with them, with those applications. Um, in the Article 9 section, um, there are a number of standards and requirements that uh, that need to be met. And um, a couple of those, I uh, hopefully you've all had an opportunity to review this and, and uh, uh, become familiar with it. Um, a couple of the standards in particular, um, I think, are of, of interest. Uh, the first one, um, the zoning change shall be consistent with the Town of Greenfield Comprehensive Plan and shall be in keeping with the town's rural character. Um, we've had some, uh, Jack and Chip and I have had some discussion about you know, how an applicant would actually make that demonstration and how they should come forward and present information around that. Um, at this point, we do have um, uh, in the applications uh, for both of these applicants, both Norwich and Cushing, uh, they have gone through these standards and the requirements and provided information on all of them. 
Um, the comprehensive plan piece in particular, um, we did feel as though we needed to provide a little additional guidance on how to approach that. Um, we met Jack and Schiff and I met with both uh, Norwich and with Cushman uh, separately and went through these standards and requirements and had some discussion about them and talked about well, the kinds of information that seem appropriate to submit um, um, pursuant to these requirements. And the comprehensive plan piece in, in particular, I think, uh, was, was somewhat challenging. Um, what, um, what I did um, was to go through the comp plan, the sections, mostly the land use sections that have potentially to do with this kind of development and thought about the provisions in the comp plan that, um, uh, that were somewhat relevant to a proposal like this. So we provided some guidance uh, to the applicants in terms of what they might want to look at, uh, the kinds of uh, analysis they, they should do, and, and what sort of information might be useful for them to put forward in trying to make that kind of demonstration. So we went through um, uh, the standards, we went through the general requirements uh, with the applicants. And um, as we were looking at all of this, it became clear that if you look at the standards and the requirements, some of those, it, it is necessary in an application process for the applicant to come forward with information on those to actually make a submission. There are some other requirements and standards that are like requirements that are more general, that um, they're, they're more like a, um, a rule. They don't require anything in an application. Um, uh, a good example would be um, uh, in section three, um, three I maybe. Um, it says any violation of the terms, conditions, and the restrictions contained in the zoning agreement shall be violations of the ordinance, et cetera. So clearly that's not something that would um, be necessary to address in the application, but it is a, a standard that applies to this process and to the applicant and set the manager. So Jack did um, a, um, a first draft uh, of an actual application form and kind of went out through these and put forward with a little bit of additional explanation the standards and requirements that would require the applicant to provide information to us. Um, we collaborated on this draft, we made some adjustments to it, and um, it's not perfect, but I think it was it was pretty helpful, particularly with John Cushing as he was putting his application together. So um, the Cushing application that you had um, was transferred to this form. He used this form um, when he made his, his uh, second submission. Um, so uh, process-wise, um, as with the regular site review process, um, um, CHIP would take a look at the application and make an initial completeness uh, determination. Uh, the planning board uh, would follow up with a final completeness determination. And that is our purpose tonight, to look at these applications uh, for completion. Um, the ordinance requires that we hold a public hearing within 30 days with that completeness determination. Um, we can hold a site visit um, if that's appropriate and, and uh, board members uh, feel it, um, um, it's important. Um, following that, the planning board would, uh, following the public hearing, the planning board would review all of the information, the results of the public hearing, and deliberate, and then develop a recommendation. The recommendation could be to recommend the application, to recommend it with conditions, or not to recommend the application. Um, and that recommendation goes to the select board. So if um, uh, you know, theoretically, if the uh, planning board decided to recommend to put an application for it to the select board, that would go to them, they would consider it, and then um, 
ultimately it would go to a town meeting vote. And that's one of the big differences with this process as opposed to you know, our site review process. So there's a town meeting vote that's part of the uh, part of the mix here. Um, if all of that um, passed, if the application went through that process, was recommended and passed by the voters, then uh, the regular site review process would have to be followed. So all of the, the standards, um, the site review standards, are not considered in this rezoning process. There's a little bit of it, I'm sure you noticed when you were looking at this section, that there are certain pieces like you know, submitting a survey plan and, and um, certain aspects of it, like um, um, access to town or state roadways. And there are some elements uh, that overlap to a certain extent with the site requirements, but not a great deal of that. And the majority of the site requirements would be considered following the reasonable process. Um, so, as I, I mentioned, our purpose tonight is to consider uh, both of the applications. Uh, Norwich is up first, and following that, we'll be looking at the clipping application. Um, we'll be examining those for completeness. Um, we use basically the same process that we use for site review applications. Um, we'll have the applicant present their application, uh, go through the highlights, uh, mention any uh, particular points that they think are important. Um, the board will have an opportunity to ask questions and um, have some discussion around it. And um, um, if uh, it is final complete, uh, then we can, we can talk about um, you know, the possibility of a, of a public hearing and time with that. Um, I would point out uh, one more thing about the Article 9 provisions um, having to do with the public hearing. Um, and the LUO requires that a public hearing be held within 30 days of finding an application complete under this section. So um, in theory, if we were to find an application complete tonight, um, the outside date, our deadline for holding a hearing would be the 14th of December. Um, we do have a regular meeting. Um, scheduled with the 12th of December. So um, again, theoretically, that's a possibility. Um, and the final thing I'd say generally about all of this is that um, Norwich, um, following our meeting, they had asked for some additional information about time frame. And um, I wrote a memo um, about that. And it was it was theoretical. It didn't bind us in any way. Um, it um, it just projected making a series of assumptions about the dates. And I had intended to send that to all of you before tonight, and I didn't do it. But I'll make sure you have it. Um, but it, it starts. Uh, you know, the first assumption is that we would hold a public hearing on December twelfth. And then there are other requirements in the ordinance um, in terms of timing. And I bumped those out and just put in some general time frames uh, to get a sense of what it might look like if we were to initiate with the hearing on the 12. So um, with that, um, I don't know if there are any uh, questions or concerns about the provisions uh, generally before we begin. Or any pieces of this that you want to talk about further before we start? Um, now's the time. Paul, uh, am I correct that uh, under Article 9, Section 4, um, goodness, Section 4, Subsection C9, that once, once the planning board decides an application is complete, that we then have our public hearing within 30 days. We then make a recommendation of one sort or another to the that goes to the select board. But then, isn't it the select board that determines the next step? That is, when there'll be a, a town meeting, if it'll be a special town meeting, or held in, or just uh, set to the next regular town meeting. Correct. Yeah, uh, that that is a, a decision for the select board. 
Yeah, that is not within the planning board's purview. Um, and the select board would be would be discussing that. Well, it does specifically say for consideration at the next scheduled town meeting and it specifically says that it's not part of the special town meeting. Right. So yeah, it does it, yeah. Implying that it would be the next regular meeting. I wouldn't I wouldn't agree with that interpretation. If they stopped with that before the last sentence, I would say yes. But then it's well, you're not required to hold a regular one. I mean a special one. What needs to be is it doesn't mean you can't. You could, yeah. You 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 could hold a special one, and if, if they decided to hold a special one and schedule it, that would be the next the next scheduled town meeting. <laughs> it's the way I read it. So, um, anyway, that would be a a decision for for another day. Um, so, any anything else about? About this case, I, I have a question. Jack. Um, so it says in section three H that an agreement containing all the conditions and restrictions shall be recorded in the registry. And so, so if we so, for example, on this one, if we say it's, we would say it's limited to use as a solar solar facility. And would we put other aside from that restriction? Would we say other restrictions? You know, like it has to be completely buffered from other property, or how detailed do we get? I mean, because we're going to have a site review where we usually tend to deal with buffering and lighting and noise and glare and all that. To what extent do we put any of that in what goes into this decision and gets recorded in the registry? Well, it, you know, as, as, as I read this, um, the, the LUO, gives the planning board the option of um, recommending an application with conditions. So if that's what happened, I would assume that any conditions that you placed would be part of this agreement. But I don't believe, I, I'm, I'm quite certain that it would not require us to, you know, to delve into the site review requirements. And to include all of that, because as you said, um, we'll be going through that process separately, and it won't happen until after the rezoning piece is completed. So, so I mean, they would still be subject to any conditions we put on the site review if it was an approval on that approval. Um, but I read this that what's recorded with the registry has to do with the rezoning. And any yeah. conditions related to the rezoning are what would be included here. Would that so, for example, I I don't know Cushing's square footage, but let's say it's let's say it's eight thousand square feet. Would we and at this stage would we say it's rezoned for the purpose of constructing an eight thousand square foot warehouse storage building? And that would get recorded, so it couldn't be greater than eight thousand square feet or whatever it is. Well, I hadn't really thought about it that way, but it sounds like that's an option that we have. Uh -huh. Okay, I think we could do it that way. I or not? I read it where it's more associated with the rezoning piece only. Yeah, and then. <laughs> The site review piece is separate and it's also compounded a little bit in complication because in the solar applications situation, there's also a deed recorded with reporting requirement from the site review perspective uh, okay. as well. So you get a double, yeah, yeah. double, double moments. So it may be a bit confusing. Yeah. Okay. And I read that to be more of the descriptive side. 
within 10 days to the code, which there's no way you'd be able to complete the site review process within that time frame. No, so no, no. It would obviously just be associated with the, well, not obviously, but I would say it's associated with the district code. Does that make sense for you, Jack? Yeah. Can you hear us? Well, it was kind of garbled. I can hear Paula well, but it, you were saying yeah. garbled. It's because I'm mumbling. Yeah, I was going to say Henry was mumbling. So Sorry. there's an explanation for that. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Anything else, Bill? Okay, well, again, our purpose tonight is to uh, consider these applications uh, for completeness. And we'll begin with the Norwich application. We have two Norwich representatives. And um, I would ask them to come forward and uh, present a, a summary. Um, and, you know, in, in particular, um, make sure that you, you know, include some discussion about especially some of these uh, more significant standards and how you address those in the application. I'll just start off and introduce myself. I'm Jeff Martin, um, development project manager at Norwich Solar. I was here last time, but the morning back, um, Martin Skaska, our chief development officer, was here uh, presenting at the last meeting. Um, she, as we mentioned at that meeting, she's down in Florida right now. Um, so she regrets that she can't be here, but you know, she's having fun down there. Um, so um, I'm here in that place. I'm here with Jeremy, who was also here last time. I've seen her. Turn over to Kara for highlights of our application. Hi everyone. Um, so I'm not going to go through much um, on the project itself. Everyone who was here last time and is familiar with the project. Um, but before I get into the application, I just wanted to highlight a couple of uh, changes to the project since we were here last um, in consideration of feedback we received at that September meeting. So um, you may recall that the over the, the power from Main Street to the array was an overhead line. Um, previously, feedback we received at the last meeting was placed at underground, so that change has been implemented and is reflected on this uh, revised plan. Um, and then the only other changes really are just a couple of cosmetic changes. We uh, tried to differentiate the zoning districts a little better so you can see where the, the rural district is compared to the rural residential district. Um, and tried to also show the 200 foot uh, array setback line more prominently on the plan. So those are the only changes, um, but I just wanted to point those out to, so that you can, can take a peek. Um, so I guess when you talk about more significant standards, um, those would be the ones that probably require a response. Uh, so I'll just go through real quick. Um, so, so the first standard under section two uh, is related to the consistency of the comprehensive plan and the town's rural character, as was discussed at the start of this meeting. Um, so, uh, you know, we feel that the project is consistent with the rural character of the town and the fact that it is a, a solar project that doesn't, you know, result in any additional uh, services or burden to town. They're, aren't going to be like a you know big influx of people going to a Walmart or something like that. Um, it's a passive generating facility that will sit there uh, quietly producing electricity um, uh, out of sight, kind of out of mind. Um, so I, I feel or we feel that it is a, a suitable use in the town. Um, and then just in terms of the comprehensive plan, um, I gave that a, a pretty good look through and as was alluded to before this um, presentation, it, it is a little challenging to pick out sections of the plan that 
you know, and, and kind of make the case for how this is consistent with with the plan. Um, but the things that stuck out to me were uh, specifically with regards to the local economy goals. Um, there's one in particular about uh, the uh, recommendation to allow for new commercial service and clean light industrial growth in designated growth areas to diversify the town's tax base, promote local job opportunities, and make important services available for local citizens. Um, so we feel that this project is a great example of that. Um, it is a, a clean and light industrial uh, development and will promote uh, local job opportunities, particularly during you know the construction phase. Obviously, once it is operational, um, it doesn't really require a whole whole lot. But um, and there are a couple others uh, that were under the local economy section. Um, but I, I don't think I'll get get into those too much. Um, if anyone has any questions, feel feel free. Um, but one of, one of the things that we wanted to kind of point out during this presentation that seems to come up a bit at our at the last meeting was just the kind of comparison between this project that's being proposed and the one that you're all used to seeing here in Rebuild uh, that's about a mile away from this project. Um, so just a couple of key differences um, between our proposed project and that one. Um, the size definitely is quite a bit different. I mean, in the comprehensive plan, it described that as a 25 acre project. Um, my research shows that it's probably more like 20 acres, but I, I put in what was in the comprehensive plan. But, um, you know, this facility is just around like nine and a half acres um, for the fenced area. So it is, is quite a bit smaller. And uh, based on our review of, of that facility, it's probably about like 450 feet off of Main Street. Is that what we, yeah. we looked at? Um, whereas our project is going to be set back uh, substantially more than a thousand, a thousand feet from Main Street. Um, and you know, it has a lot of existing forest vegetation between the array and, and Main Street. So that kind of to me all goes back to the fact that this project is fitting with the rural character of Reedfield. Um, moving on, um, I, I guess, you know, to standard 2B is, is pretty similar to 2A, and um, I mean, I can get into the different setback decisions, but we talked about those last time, so I think I'll, I'll skim over that one. Um, 2C is just about how the proposal will serve the public good, safety, or welfare of the town. Um, so, as a, a clean, renewable energy source, um, it you know is beneficial to not only the town of Reedfield but the state um, as a whole in the fact that you know it will reduce uh, emissions. Um, I put in some very specific <laughs> pictures about. Um, emission rates for carbon dioxide and and nitric oxide. Um, so that's uh, you know one one way that the project will serve the public good and welfare of the town. Um, and I mean we mentioned this last time, but uh, the array will be obviously surrounded by a fence, um, so it's going to you know not allow any residents um, or any anyone else in there walking around in array. Um, not that it is, you know, a, a dangerous situation, but obviously there is electrical limit associated with the project. Um, I guess those are, oh, we've got D. Um, so the, the proposal shall be protective of all natural resources, including significant wildlife habitat. Uh, we went through this pretty thoroughly last time, I think. Um, you know, we reached out to the state agencies. We did wetland water body and vernal pool surveys. Uh, there are no wetland impacts, no water body impacts, no vernal pools, um, no significant wildlife habitats on the site, no um, rare natural communities or, or anything like that. So 
Um, those are those are the four four big basic standards. Um, is there anything else anyone would like us to talk about specifically? When, um, I, I know you talked about this the first time, but um, um, I'd like to hear again a little bit more about, um, let's see, I'm thinking about 3K in particular that talks about buffers along property lines. Um, and there was, um, it's okay. gonna hold that up. what, the eastern side? The side that's um, most clear. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And if you could just talk about um, that side that is not as, yeah, as heavily wooded and, and more clear than the other, and its proximity to the to the adjacent property. And there's a residence over there somewhere. Yeah, there's a, well, there's one here. I think that's actually the nearest one that's that's right here. Okay. Um. Yeah. So it is. Uh, what's that? It's so, back. so hard to see. I know, but I wanted to show the clearance. <laughs> uh, so there is a super faint line that's very difficult to see, but it's this little white with blue line right here. Um, and so that that signifies the the tree line. Um, so there will be a small buffer um, of. I'm gonna hand that to you. Of uh, forces that are taken on that side that remain that will remain after the project. Um, get back to my notes here. Yeah, so uh, it'll be about 25 feet along that eastern property line. Um, and the nearest nearest structure. Uh, I think I have it here. Yeah, 720 feet. So from the other way to that residence that we were just pointing out on the south land. And and remind me again why why um you're clearing on that side because it's not really close to where the array is going to be updated. I mean it's all to prevent dating of the, the array. Um I don't do any of that modeling. Um, I don't think you do that. I don't do that modeling either. But um, so you have to take into account the height of the trees uh, on that side, um, as well as the topography. Uh, so yeah, that's all part of the analysis um, that's done to minimize shading. Other questions? Can you, uh, I'm just curious, I can't remember what the current use of the land is right now. I know that it's, uh, it was a sludge spreading field apparently. Right. At some point. Yep. But what's it currently? Is it a hay field or is uh, it I honestly don't know what hay is. I don't, I don't know either. I, I believe I, it is a hay field, but I can't say that word. They either mow it for hay or something else. Obviously, yeah. they keep it as a deal. And, but... and the idea, just remind me, the idea was that it is that you, not you, but North Norwich will will acquire the property, own the property, correct? Not least, right? It's a own asset. Okay. Great. I guess I just, you know, when I read the comprehensive plan, I know a lot about it. Um, I, I, uh, you know, preservation of agricultural properties is, is a priority. Um, you talk about fine agriculture. I think the comprehensive plan is a little broader than that, but I don't disagree with what you state as sort of wrong as it. So it just brings in, into my mind this, you know, the continued use of that. But again, it may not be perhaps in that usage, which is what I was just going to ask you a question about. And then you also mentioned something which I'm sure, I'm sure uh, we, I don't necessarily disagree with those, just, just for thought, you know, our experience is um, our, the last con the last proposal did come in here and say um, that, you know, it could provide, you know, to, could improve the tax base, but also provide local jobs during the construction phase. That was definitely not the case. They contracted almost the entire project 
outside of Maine, even we had people coming in from Texas and Pennsylvania, and there was almost zero. In fact, there probably was zero, except for the CMP guy that had to hook it up. Uh, uh, local local benefits. So I would advise to perhaps soften that language and 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 if you don't know for sure how that's going to work with local contractors, um, yeah. then I would I would not say that because that's. Yeah, and I don't, I think it's not even that isn't even something that we specifically stated in the application, I don't think, but that's a good point because although I, I mean, I don't mind if you'd like, but um, the goal is to use local contractors. <clears throat> it's not always an option, obviously, depending on right. when you go to construction. Is there anyone local that is available to, to do the work that you need done? So. I can say on, on most of the projects, at least in Vermont, we're, we're using local contractors, at least for the site preparation work for sure. Yeah. Um, but often um, for electrical work as well, it's, it's right. local contractors. Glad to hear that. No, I mean, if, if, if you do, you know, if you do in your application and your opinion you know, as progressive, if it does succeed, I would just, I would absolutely support that. I think it's a great thing. You should do that. But um, a lot of times people use that for at, they toss that phrase around a lot, and um, it, it's very disingenuous to the communities that they're coming into. Not that you're personally coming, you know what I mean. So, if you don't know, be authentic, otherwise, don't say it. Otherwise. Um, yeah, kind of limited the, the selection. On page two of your application, you state that there are no known prime farmland soils within the project area. Is that correct? Uh, that, yeah, that's what we said. <laughs> the one type that you identified that might be uh, uh, designated um, of importance is not within the actual uh, array proposed. Right. In fact, do you have any knowledge that any crops have been grown on this site? For sale to the public in any recent memory on the slide. You know, uh, no. no, I mean I I know if it's where I'm not trying to be coy. But if this is the land, I think it is. It was hayed by observation in past years. I haven't seen it hayed uh, this year, but um, that's the only thing I've ever viewed from the road. The, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm 100% following you, but I will say that our on page two, that is specifically in regards to the soils and how the National, um, oh, National Resource Conservation Service classifies them. So they will classify soil types as prime farmland, farmland of statewide importance, and I think there's one other designation. And so that's specifically what that is talking about. Oh. Yeah. What I'm trying to get at is whether this project would supplant an existing agricultural use there. Yeah. Yeah. When you say prime, you say prime agricultural soil. What about the other class? No other classifications for agricultural soil. Well, so there's the farmland of statewide importance. Um, so those, I think. There's a that one is in the project parcel, but not within the array area. Um, and then all the other soil types were not classified as a, a farmland soil. Those details are in the NRCS report that we included in the Yeah, I see you're that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, as I recall, there was some discussion last time too about perhaps doing something outside of the area of the array, um, something agricultural, whether that be yep. cows or... Yeah, we, we did mention that in this application, just that um, we would like to maintain that option. Um, it is, I will be honest, a little unclear to us how this zoning designation works and um, you know, we would like to be able to use the site for the solar array, obviously, but also to have the flexibility to, you know, graze animals if that's an opportunity 
that you know works out or some other agricultural uh, use to do you know dual use on the site. So it wasn't clear to us if we would be limited in that way. If I, I'm not aware of anything in here that would, um, if it was designated as a commercial industrial infrastructure zone, that that um, limits your ability to use it for some other use that would otherwise be allowed. Right. Yeah, that was our understanding. Yeah. But yeah. I had a question. Yeah. Uh, and you may have already answered this, but uh, so the total fenced area is about nine and a half acres, but then the total cleared area is 17.51 acres. And uh, from the cleared area to the nearest house is how far? I don't have that in this particular application. I think it was in that other one. There was some well, distance there, so that was 720 feet. If I that was from correct. the that was clear array. From the array. Yeah, uh, in from the clearing limit. And I, I do have that um, number, but uh, oh, 500 feet. But so it's 500 feet of from the clearing line to the nearest um, nearest residence. That one that we were talking about earlier. And is that is that 500 feet wooded? It is, yes. And that's on your property, so it would could be maintained as a wooded buffer. It is not all on the project property now. Um, so how how? big of a wooded buffer would there be on your property? Probably about half that looks like. It's like from here to here. Yeah. Uh, how do I throw the There you go, right yeah. there. Is that visible at all? Probably not. I would say that it looks to, I can't give you a specific measurement, but it looks to me that it'd be about 250 feet on the property that we are going to own. 250-ish feet on the property of the residents. I don't know if you can see my fingers, but yeah, uh, yeah, it is. I mean, just using my fingers, it's a, it's a larger area that's wooded on our property, um, but but not significantly larger. About half and half. Okay, thanks. And the other 200. Feet is owned by the party who owns the residence. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. When you're talking about just, just because every town is different, but in this town, when you talk about the acreage of the array or the project itself, it's important we classify that and define that in the ordinance as the energy system, which includes every component of the project and that's part of the solar program, including the distribution system. So doing a lot of so some communities may care about just the fenced area or just the array of the panel area, but that is not what we care about. We care about the total impact of the area. And so it's so whatever that number is, it's not nine acres, it's 15 acres or 17 acres. So that's the number to be putting into the documentation, and that's the number that we been communicated, I'm sure, at some point to, to, to the broader community. So just so, so you know how we define it here, it's very specific. It's a little different. Every community is a little different. Because we want people to realize that the total uh, impact of the project is so specific so I see. That definition's in the, in the solar ordinance? It's in the solar ordinance, not in the one of ordinance. It's got a solar energy system in the plan. Is that? I can show you after. Any other questions for Norway? I had one other question. Um, you note know that there's some wetlands, and I 
didn't know how far the array was from the wetlands. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't think I could tell you that offhand. Um, I can tell you we're not inspecting them um, pretty pretty far. The nearest wetland would be oh, up here. So that's about the same distance as that residence. Um, so, you know, just from the array itself, probably 700 feet. Um, the access drive is actually the closest piece to the wetlands. Um, so the access in the underground line is going right next to the access way. And that looks to be, oh, I don't know, 100 ish, maybe feet from the wetlands. I have to get out a, a ruler to get more specific. But. Okay, thanks. Okay. Any other any other questions? Now, in terms of completeness, um, as I mentioned, uh, Chip did the initial review when it came in, and um, um, Jack and I also did a preliminary review. Um, for completeness, because it was, you know, really the first application that was coming in under this, yeah. under this article, and um, um, we were in agreement that you know, the pieces seemed to be there. Um, obviously, we're not passing judgment on you know, whether or not they pass muster in terms of the standards and the adequacy and so forth that will come mm -hmm. as we deliberate this. But I think that we, the three of us, anyway, were were pretty comfortable that the required pieces uh, were within the application. Any other issues anyone wants to raise? Any you know, questions for knowledge to help the application? Anything you feel should be here that you don't see? No, I just want to commend always for putting together a complete application package that I thought they did a good job of that. Yeah. yeah. Good. I agree. Okay, well, if there's nothing else, um, no other questions or discussion points, um, we are ready for a motion. This would be a motion concerning um, completeness and the scheduling of the public hearing. Paul, there's one other issue about whether there would be a site visit or not. Yeah, we can, you know, we can do a site visit if, you know, if that's the, the consensus here that uh, people would like to do one. We could add that to the motion if that's the direction everyone wants to go in. It's how much time we get between now and the morning. So I'll make a motion to find the application complete and provide notice as required under the ordinance and schedule a public hearing and waive the site visit. Wait a second. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Don seconds. No further discussion. And it has specific notification requirements. Is it a slightly different, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So soon that one. Yeah. Um, one one question. If if anyone wanted to go in there and, and take a look at that property. Is that possible? I mean, can we just go in or do we need to get more of a why don't mission, just, have someone accompany or? Why don't I just check on that? Okay, but you should, should let us know. Um, let me know and I'll it. You know, we've done that with, with some other applications um, as, you know, if individual board members uh, would like to see a property <laughs> and they reach to do that on their own. So if that's an option, um, I'd like to know that. Okay. 
Okay, further discussion about the motion? Um, okay, um, I will um, take a vote. Um, all those in favor of the motion? Jack? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Question about the record? No, I was just wondering, did we not? Do we not usually publish the site? Is it the planning for the site? Yeah, if yeah. the public wants to show up at the site. Yeah, it, if we're doing it as a board, you know, it's a public meeting. Yeah. And and we do publish that. Right. And um, I I forget the number. If you know, if three of us decided to go out together, mm -hmm. we would have to notice that. Okay. Yeah. Okay, um, so we found the application complete. Um, um, we voted to schedule a public hearing. Um, if there is interest in seeing the site, individual site members may be able to do that on their own, but we'll wait to hear from you about uh, the company's position on them. I know that of hunting areas, so people should be careful. Yeah, uh, <laughs> a lot, lots of hunters crawling around. Go on Sunday. Well, maybe that's not safe either. <laughs> um, so, um, you know, as, as I mentioned, um, we are required to do a public hearing within 30 days. And um, it appears to me that the 12th is probably the date that's right for that. Uh, it's within the 30. It's um, a regularly scheduled um, planning board meeting date. And so I would put that out there for your consideration. Um, One other thing if, is that we have to give notice at least 20 days in advance to people within 500 feet of this property. Right, right. There are several notice requirements in here that are a little bit different than the normal ones. And uh, we can work together. We can talk about those. Chip and I will talk about those. And, and Chip will make sure that happens. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> I was going to volunteer to try to write up a notice that would go to people within 500 feet and then run it, send it to you. Yeah. No, that would be great, Jack. Sold. <laughs> no, I want to do it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Great. Thank you very December, much. December 12th. Uh, yes, yeah, we'll, excuse me, 6.30, I assume. Uh, yes, yeah. Do you have any questions? Yeah. I think we're good. Okay. Right. Thank and you. if there are any questions that come up, you know, between now and then. We don't have any more chat. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Yes. Okay. Um, our second uh, application is um, John Cushing's application for a commercial industrial zone uh, within the village district. And um, one, one point I didn't mention earlier is that these CID zones um, are possible within a number of different zones, um, there is, um, they cannot be placed in a village residential district, but uh, village uh, is open to this, as is rural, where the solar project is, is located. So John's property is in the village district, and it is the property where he currently has a storage building that we approved some time ago. Um, uh, yeah, to one up on the road, the old church, and then the, the new building, which is down behind, which is, is quite difficult, which is a good thing to see from the road. Um, and so his proposal is to build additional storage um, down in that area. Um, and cumulatively, the storage area would exceed the 5,000 square feet, and that triggers the need for the CIA zone. 
So, John, I'll turn it over to you if you want to summarize and um, highlight the important pieces of your application for us. All right. Um, would you just like me to read you? Because I'm really not all that great at uh, explaining things. Um, basically, what I want to do, I guess, and if you have any questions, if you want to go through this, just holler at me, is I'd like to put two buildings down below beside the building that's down that you really can't see that I put in last year. Um, one building is 100 by 50, the other one is 100 by 20. Um, it takes up most of the space that I have on that piece of property. And the reason for doing this is it's just a lot easier than buying another piece of property and only having a half full. Um, I think the place where it's going, uh, no one's going to be able to see it. You know, it's a perfect, perfect spot for a building that, you know, if you're going to do a, I call it a drop zone. I guess I'm wrong that interpretation, but that's what I call it, a drop zone when coming to this farm. I don't know why that is, but. Um, let's see. Before I go too far, does everyone have a copy of all this? Yeah, and you have a map. So, okay. And so, um, beautiful hand drawn map. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how great it is. Would you like me to go through each question and answer one of these? Would it be easier? Well, um, if if you can. You know, attempt to summarize for us, you know, the high points in okay. each of those standards. Like, um, you know, we had spent some time when we met talking about ways to address the requirement that it be consistent with the comprehensive plan. And um, I know you picked out mm -hmm. certain pieces of the comp plan that, that might be relevant and address those. Okay. So if you want to look at the I have highlights. not the greatest memory in the world, but I know that uh, the comprehensive plan, um, when you're doing something of this nature, it's in the right district. Um, it meets the guidelines in effect that it's hidden, it's, it's off the property line, it, um, well, there is a question in here that asked how it, how it uh, benefits the town. I don't know, is it really indirectly benefits the town in any way, except for the fact that, you know, I allow, I have storage. It's uh, competitive with everybody else price-wise. But uh, instead of looking at some of the deals, everything else on people's lawns, you know, a lot of them bring that stuff to me now. So now it's it's one less place it can't be seen, and it, it provides a service for people in town. Uh, there are people that come from our town to use the storage units, but I found that most of the storage units are pretty closely priced, and most of the people that come here are no further than pay. There's a lot of people in Rayfield in the storage units, um, so it does benefit. Refield in the surrounding towns, and um, I'd have to say mostly Wayne Refield and, and Fair, but mostly Refield. Um, we had we had talked at the meeting a little bit about. Um, about it being compatible with the surrounding area and rural character. And uh, we had talked about buffers. You might want to talk about that a little bit. You know, what's what's on the other side of your property lines and uh, what do the buffers look like that you would have and maintain from the from the storage units? Uh, the buffer that is there now um, is a lot of trees. It's down over in Bankman. Um, specifically, uh, I have a neighbor to the left and to the right. I have Camp uh, KV behind me. Um, a lot of woods, a lot of woods. I wanted to try to leave 20 feet of trees on the edge. Um, one side, 
is probably only going to have roughly 10 feet of trees, but there are a good amount of trees, um, a lot of leaves on them. So it's, it's quite a bucket. It's down over an embankment. Um, so I don't know if you guys have drove by and tried to look for the new building that's down, but you can see the roof just there. Uh, the building's going to be brown. The roof's going to be green as to try to hide it. Um, it's not going to be, it's not a highway, you know, it's not, there's, there's people come in and they store stuff. They don't come in on every day. You know, they come in and they put something in there. They might not come back for weeks, months. So there's not a high volume of traffic. So you, it's, you don't notice it. And that's one of the reasons why I decided to expand it down there and not put something on a bigger piece of land where you could see it. Most of the land that is available is right off the main drag. And uh, it's all visible. And I'll be honest with you, I don't want to look at him any more than the next guy. So to me, it, it works out pretty well. Um, so we have trees, we have the color of the building, we have the fact that it's down on the embankment, and you know, I, I just don't picture a lot of people being able to see it. As far as lighting, I may have some um, solar lights. Uh, which are motion detected, but they won't be too many of them. And I can always leave them on the inside of the buildings towards the middle of the property. This way, people, you know, our neighbors and my neighbors won't have to only know the night. Who does that out in all the trees? They won't have to stare at that. It's going to be pretty secluded. I don't plan on putting power down there. It's going to be pretty minimal the size, the size of the buildings. So you said earlier that the buildings that you're planning. Pretty much fills up the property, so there there wouldn't wouldn't be a plan to do anything further after this. No, there, there won't be a plan. Um, because you need twenty feet to get around the buildings. Uh, it's not taking up the whole property; it's just taking up the property in the sense that you can't get around, have it hidden, and be able to use it. You know, I the buildings that I proposed, you've got twenty feet around them, you've got ten to twenty feet of trees around them. And you've got roughly 40 feet in between the middle of them um, to drive through. So it pretty much takes up the property. Nothing else will be able to be built there because it just won't be wrong. Um, I don't plan on putting anything else down there. Sometimes I wonder if this is too much, but um, it's what I would like. It's what I would like to do. And I, I think it would, um, like I said, it would benefit townspeople to have a place to store things. They want to get them off their lawn, out of their garage, or their room. They got a nice place to put it. It's safe. It's hidden. Um, I go in there quite frequently. Every other day, I'm almost driving through there, checking on things. Um, so, you know, there's no big fences. There's no big set of lights going on. So you said one side, would, uh, two sides would have about 20 feet of trees and the other would have 10. Which which is the side with 10? It would be the side towards the railroad tracks. Okay. And? It's quite cool. I mean, for me to fit the buildings in that, that's just what it comes up to be. But, you know, I can do like I do with the other buildings, too. If for some reason, you guys come down after it's built, and you think I have to put some more trees in there. It's not, it's not that hard to do. Hey, John, is the existing building that's there, mm -hmm. is the, that's the 20 by 110? Yeah. Okay, so it's the, it's the 50 by 100 that's what's triggering this application. What current is application is everything. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm over it, so both of those buildings are. are but, but the 50 by 100 is what you have not yet built. I haven't built the 50 by 100, and I haven't built the 20 by 100. Okay, so. There's two buildings I'm proposing to build. Okay, and so you, have, but you already do have a. 100 by 110 by 20, roughly, yeah. Okay. And, then, and then the church building is, is storage. Also. Right. So does that all get summed together yeah. as part of the profit? Yeah. Wasn't it? Yeah. Wasn't so aggregated. Yeah. yeah. So I'm looking at the 
the flight plan shows it has two rectangles in pink on it. And those are the I, those are the two that are proposed. Yeah. Well, one that you gave us last year, or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. What's that? This one. Huh? That's a nice one. So those are the two. Those are the proposed. Yeah. yeah. That's, the, that's the one you we, we approved before. That's correct. And then there's which is the church, yeah, and that's the right. Yeah, that's the house, and that's the church. Yes, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, uh, Mr. Kutcher. Yeah, I see. As you already said, you put in the application, and I believe you already said you don't plan at this point. You're not planning to have a put electricity to the, the new buildings. Uh, is that right? Right. Do you have an electricity to the existing building? Yes. Okay. So. And you also mentioned normal, expect normal business hours of operation. So at nighttime, if you're not if you're not operating, would you have it gated and keep people from going in there at night or I can. I I never have. Um I've had a few people stop up because I know it's And okay. I, I see a few people stopping up there late in the evening, but eh, they use it 10 or 15 minutes and they're gone. So, so I'm sorry. I was just trying to envision. So, I mean, I know it's not unusual for people to access storage units at all hours in other places, but mm -hmm. if they came in, they'd have to go in one of the new, if it were a new building, one of the ones that we approved this in, one of the new buildings, they'd have to go in with their flashlights or something that they wouldn't have um, right. otherwise been able to see what they're doing. So. Well, on the inside of the two buildings, I was most likely I'm going to put uh, Solar lights in, and but they're only they're activated by senses, so you know, they come on for a minute and then they go out. Okay, go uh, I'm actually just thinking. So you don't anticipate a lot of traffic at night. I don't know. I don't. I don't have a lot of the place that I have now. And this light that stays on out there all the time. It was there when I bought the place. I left it there. It's on the telephone bowl. Um, but I don't. I don't get a lot of traffic at night. I just there's just not a lot going on. There. Most of it's there in the day. I think most people just, you know, when they're doing stories, they just don't go over in the middle of the night. I mean, there are people that, you know, sometimes you got to have something or something happens, but for the most part, most of those storage units, people visit during the day. And I've never had a problem with uh, noise, um, anything like that. I've had no complaints from uh, any of my renters. Now, what's the rationale behind the uh size of the proposed buildings like why are they different and then also the second part of that question is why are they on this map and it made it, i realize this is a hand-drawn sketch so understanding that but is there a reason like they're quite far away from the other building or is it like why are they why are they where you put them on the map <laughs> well to be honest with you i think that they're down a too far there should be measurements on that map and I don't know if you can see them. I know there's a map of measurements. Yeah, there. it's got the numbers all. So, because there's a significant drop of an ink below, I believe right. it's four feet from the building that's there now. So, they have to be moved downhill where it's more flat so that you can, okay. you know, you can drive down at an easy not just if you put them too close, you're going to have to fill, you know, you got four or five feet of fill in there just to put the buildings on, which I don't want to haul any more in there than I have to. I don't really want to change. Okay. Uh, what's there? So there's a slope between the, the yes, the existing building and the building. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And there just needs to be room to. There just needs to be room between those. The roads going to come around both sides, and in the middle, it's going to be. I'm not sure if I have a catch basin in the front of it. There's a catch basin on the back side, which is uh, it's like a containment pond. And if both of those buildings meet the, the standard 20 foot requirement from the sideline. Correct. Correct. Yeah. So, I, don't, I don't think they do. 
Yeah. Well, on the on the map, it looks a little hairy, but yeah. the measurements are there. Yeah. Yeah. Jack. So, for purposes of what we're doing tonight, we're not necessarily approving a twenty by one hundred and a fifty by one hundred building, right? I mean, if we do a site visit and determine there has to be more of a buffer or whatever, we might only approve a 20 by 80 or a 40 by 60 building, right? We're not, we're just approving it for exceeding the 5,000 square foot limitation, um, but not these specific buildings in this particular okay. You know, uh, again, that you know that relationship between this process and the site review process is not you know crystal clear. There's not a, a you know a clear line in the sand between the two. There is a little bit of overlap, but no, we wouldn't. You know, under this process, we would be looking at the general standards having to do with the with the district, um, not the specifics of the proposal. Okay. So there would be opportunity to talk about that a lot more during the site review process. Um, okay. But in terms of this process, you know, um, there was that piece that we talked about earlier having to do with any restrictions and conditions having to be filed with the registry and, and so forth. If it was decided, you know, just by way of example, that um, um, you know, we we agreed that it was important to say, you know, if this is approved, you can't build any more buildings here. Um, you know, I think that's a condition that theoretically we could put on this on this uh, district approval um, and say that you know this is the the maximum amount of storage building that could be placed. Um, but it wouldn't necessarily approve those buildings, which we would do under site review. Yeah. That makes any sense. That's how I understood it. Was this process was just trying to allow a change, and then I still have to apply for the building permits, in which case. You know, we have to measure it. We have to do all sorts of things. It's just another process. Yeah. Well, there's actually two more processes. Well, yes, but you know what I'm saying? This is just one little step. Right, right. This, yes. is, this is the first. And right. the site review process. And then, you know, I can move through that. You'd have to deal with chip on the actual building permit and use permit. And this is our first effort in using this process. And maybe we're asking more questions than we need to at this stage, but we, we just thought we should re so we know in our own minds what's going on here. Uh, mm -hmm. And this, it's a multi-step process, and this is the first step. <laughs> well, if it's never been done, there's just a lot of questions and a lot of what ifs. It's just part of property. John, is is all the property there, you know, where the apartment building is and the converted church and the warehouses down below, is that all one lot? Yes. Okay. But it has two different addresses on Main Street. Yes, it actually does. I, I it was that way when I bought it. Um, the church has one address, and the, and the duplex has another. Our house has another address. But I think that's because when they had a church, they just got different mail. I don't, I don't, I don't know exactly why. Maybe it's nine one one just to separate the buildings so they know where they are, and they don't. And the whole property is only about two acres. Or two, three point something, I believe. Does the, does the fact that it changes the zone, if, if this was to change district, does that have an impact on the ability to have like apartments there? Or no, because it, it, it doesn't. Not it's not changing it. It's uh, it's like an overlay district. So the underlying district, which is village, continues to exist, and uh, apartments are in allowed use in the village district. And then uh, the overlay would allow the greater than five thousand square feet of commercial space. 
<clears throat> so it's a village district? It's a village, correct. So how does section 3C apply? 3C. That's that has to do with village residents. Okay. They're separate. Okay. Um I should have asked this from the last time because you do uh, keep up with all of now, but does it change the taxation? I mean, John Paul wants to know that. Does it change the taxation of the property? The taxes will go up because right now it's raw land, okay? But that's up to the assessor. If so, the industrial commercial value of the is different than a residential home. So even though he's been paying, I'm just sort of saying, I mean, that's how can we just do it, right? You're paying your, your commercial businesses and your, your industrial businesses pay more. Yeah, but that, that would be true even if it didn't have to go through this district. I mean, you probably pay more tax now that you have that new building than you did before you have a new building. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's that simple. It's more than I can. <laughs> Okay. And I, don't, I don't agree with that, but that's okay. With what? Well, I agree with what you're saying, but I do think that, you know, an industrial building is worth tax higher than, say, a residential building. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I would agree with that. Right. Yeah. I would agree with that to a point. But it's a storage. If you only use it for one thing, and there's no power, there's no storage, it's not like you can rent it, you know what I mean, to manufacture things. You know what I'm saying? It's like I'm sure it's got more of a value than a residence or just a regular because you're making money with it. You know, I was just, yeah, I'm just wondering for my yeah. head. And just wondering about the impact of these decisions and how it. Yeah, the impact. <laughs> um, okay, other, other questions for John? Actually, I've got one more about the, the, the buffers and the abutting properties. Um, how how far are there, there are residences on either side. How far are those residences from the cleared area and storage buildings? Well, I don't know exactly. I mean, I'm going to be honest, I don't know exactly know. I know the neighbor closest to the railroad tracks. Their property comes right up to the edge of the church. I mean, it's 15, yeah. 20 feet. Yes, yeah. so I don't know what is that. It's because uh, the church was built a long time ago. It's close to that. But when you come on the road comes down, my road is like a septic in form. I use my road with a septic in form. I mean, it's right there. At the, the, the storage units are at a 45, you know, compared to that house, it's quite a ways away. Um, distance. Yeah. If I had to guess, it'd be over 400 feet. Oh, okay. um, neighbors on uh, Miranda Cook side is uh, Their garage might be 300 feet, maybe, to the edge of my property. I remember during the last process, the neighbors came up yeah. to talk and talk and board. And I remember their comments were they like to walk on. Generally supportive, but they, they were concerned about their legal visual impact. Yeah. And of course, at that point, you know, the visual impact and they walk, they walk animals up there. They, want they do, yeah. Mm -hmm. So just keep that in mind. It's the, it's the one, obviously, you have. Yeah. And now that, that would change. Yeah. It wouldn't change if it was me. You know, if I lived right there, someone was building something like that, I would want to know. Right? Yeah. I don't have any problem with it. Yeah. It doesn't mean that some people won't like the idea. It's just the kind of is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> I figured it was easier to come here and ask than it would be to build another property. I mean, if the townspeople came to uh, a vote later on, and the townspeople vote it down, it is what it is. On to the next project. You know what I mean? It's just, but you have to go through this to find out whether they want it or they don't. And it's just kind of, kind of the wheels. 
So Paula, the the LUO requires that warehouses and other storage activities be screened from public view and from the view of abutting property. So we can we can determine that later when we do the site review application, right? So at right. this point, we wouldn't right. need to do a site visit to look at buffers because the ordinance requires buffers and you might have to adjust the siting or size of the buildings. We're not locking that in tonight. Yeah, I, I agree. You know, I, I think it's helpful. Uh, and, you know, there is uh, some language in Article 9 about buffers and so forth. So it's helpful to understand generally what that looks like. And I think that's kind of what we've been talking about. I mean, you know, how does it look in terms of buffers in this property? But you're right, Jack, when we get to the site review process, there'll be more opportunity to talk specifically about buffers and whether or not anything more needs to be done or something needs to be a little bit different. So is the town, what goes before the town meeting is approval of allowing the construction of uh, warehouse activity, warehouse structures that exceed in total the 5,000 square foot limit. Right. I, I, I'm not sure what our, I, I don't know what our definition of warehouse is in current ordinances, but this is a storage unit for individual use. I, I, I wouldn't have played with a commercial warehouse where vendors are coming in and taking in. I, I just did an intensity of use difference between the term, but I think it was a warehouse versus a storage unit for personal items. But maybe I'm wrong about that. Um, there is I think that yeah, there's no in in the definitions in the ordinance, there's no definition specific to storage. Um, and then storage in article seven in the table of uses. Warehousing and storage. Yeah, they're combined together. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I think the, you know, the ordinance anticipates, you know, they're similar. They're similar uses, and so they kind of. Well, they're similar. Yeah. But what well, the applicable force is for storage units. Yeah. Right. We're not approving a commercial warehouse. Right, and and that's you know I think that's a, a point that that would come up during the site review process too, the intensity of use. In the in the site review in in Here's article, oh, go on. So what 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 is it that you're remembering, Kevin? This the uh, is it Steve Monsalinker? Oh yeah, yeah. Years ago, that was yeah. Yeah, that was the same. <laughs> Um, of course, when you're going to put this last one too, which wasn't nearly as impactful as in Article 8, Section 16, it talks about all storage activities, including war warehousing, have to be screened, and it explains that. All right, and this is a provision that we just modified. Right. And as, as I recall, when we approved um, John's fourth warehouse down over the hill, um, our discussion had been around uh, not really understanding whether or not we would need to require something more than trees or fencing or something that to screen it. And as it turned out, you know, we didn't require anything more because of its location, the fact that it was down over the hill. So we we kind of, you know, we left that as a as an option you know, to figure out later on after it was built if, if it required the different screening with that. And, and then ultimately decided that it did not use that one. I mean, in the bigger picture, I look at it saying, you know, does this 
does this change anything with the, yeah. what's the impact of the from the zoning perspective? And you know, you're really talking about the same use that it currently has, just a larger footprint of the same use, and it has the same. Um, you know, it it still maintains this, this similar character. It's to that neighborhood and similar feel. It's not like you're putting in a dollar tree or something. <laughs> But I mean, I, I guess that's that's sort of like the, the, the test of the, yeah. of the of the standard in my mind is that. Well, if I may, if it matters, I've had more than a handful of calls from residents over the last few months that have learned about this application, and their question has been, "Why is he doing this? He never finished the last one. The last one never went in." And I, my answer is back in. It's there. It's operational. It's full. Oh, really? They're talking. Yes. The yeah. Line. They would do. They were like, "You did such a great job." <laughs> <laughs> you made it impressive. <laughs> That's quite a stretch. <laughs> you know, I think to your point, Peter. Um, you know, I I would agree with you that there can be a you know a huge difference between a warehouse and if it was a big you know like an industrial warehouse or a commercial warehouse and trucks and there's you know all kinds of stuff going on. Um, but I think the place where that 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 comes out is during the site review process where you measure mm -hmm. impact and, and figure it out in more detail. And they're listed in the table of uses together because they're you know, and, and they're they're similar, not the same, or they might not be the same, but they are similar in general terms. <clears throat> um, other questions for John? Is there anything else you wanted to mention about the application, John, that you thought was particularly important, or something you wanted to know about? It? Not that strikes me. Uh, no, I think you had gone through. Um, I, I had mentioned to you and Christine that it would be a good idea to go through the town's maps um, in terms of you know, their, uh, you know, there was like an agricultural one and uh, a wildlife map and so forth, and, and yeah. I think you had done that. We did, and the question on this application pertaining to that there's one about wildlife in particular. I know. Yeah. If you're looking at the application, I want to say it would be um, 14 on the application. Yeah, you say it's not. Yes. Um, I'll just read it what's wrong there. After reviewing the comprehensive plan, we see on page 261, critical natural resource map that will not be in an area that has been designated as needed. Areas for wildlife. We will use all the roads and show measures needed to minimize all the potential impacts. So I guess what it's saying is on the map, the natural resource is not, we're not in that area. Yeah, the critical, critical, the critical area, correct. Um, what, what you, the only question, just for maybe from, a, from an application perspective, is is even though the application is specifically for two new structures, you know, from a land use from from a, from a Site review perspective is the is the designation to the to the just the, the CID district is that 
is that based upon the other structures that are, that are on the property that are used for the same purpose, or is it just the new part? You mean the 5,000? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's everything. Is it the 5,000? Is it the 10,000 or whatever it is? Yeah, it's, it's all of it. It's four, four structures. Four, yeah, okay. So maybe that, that's not clear in the... Is that what it is? I would think it would have to be. Once you get over 5,000 square feet, it becomes a whole... This whole, whole process would be for all the buildings. So... Um, <clears throat> So you calculated the square footage of all four buildings together? I have not. Okay. No, that's one point. Oh, okay. yeah. And that's what I mean. It's like it's just for the new stuff in this application. But I'm saying if you're putting an application for a CID, you probably need to look at it from the whole stuff. I know that we built this. The reason why that building down back is 100, I think it's 109. Or maybe it's maybe it's 110. It's an odd number because we were at. 5, yeah, you were right up. You were with against right, the 5,000. Right. Um, yeah. With, I'll call it the church, where the storage unit where the church was in the new building, you're at 5,000 square feet. So, what the home is, I know on the first application, if I went through all this, I'd probably find it taking an hour, but uh, this 5,000 square feet between those two buildings, what the actual house is or the duplex, I do not know what the square footage of that is. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think we need the duplex because that's not part of the storage endeavor. Um, it would be the church and the three storage buildings out behind. That would be the, the number, the cumulative square footage for storage. See the, new, the two new structures are seven, right? Five and two. Four minutes. How many is this? Maybe twelve. Maybe twelve. Yeah, it's one hundred. Well, one hundred twenty. Yes. Those are twelve thousand. Yes. Twelve thousand for four. Four. Yeah. Over twelve. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just saying from a completeness perspective, when it's goes to a public hearing, maybe that's, yeah. that's the number to use. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah, I mean, I think it's important to point out that you know two of the structures exist currently, yep. two of them don't, but you're right, cumulatively, that number is the important number. Does that need to be on there somewhere? Um, it does not actually ask for it. <laughs> It doesn't. It doesn't specifically. It doesn't specifically ask for. I don't know. I think just when we when we write up the notice or the right. Yes. When you write up the what am I trying to say? The public notice or whatever you know, the uh, buffer, uh, the butter notification or whatever. Right. But that's just where it says. Yeah. I don't have to explain that because people. Some people will get confused. They'll think I'm going to that's right. build this. Uh, no, it's, no, it'll, be, it'll be like for a total of 15 stories tall. Yeah, skyscraper <laughs> with a flag on it. Yeah. Yeah. The way the question is is worded is what is the total square footage of the proposed structure? So, yeah, we might want to think about modifying that question because, you know, it's existing plus proposed as triggers can trigger the violence. At all right. that point. On the parts of the right. right. Okay, anything else for John? Any other questions? Anything else for us? No. Yeah. Um, so again, with you know, with this application, um, as well as the other, um, Jack and Chip and I did look at um, it following our meeting and, and their submission of additional information and um, felt that all of the questions had been addressed. Um, but if there's anything remaining in anyone's mind, you know, please put it up there now. And if there is nothing, um, i say we're ready for a motion concerning completeness and the public hearing. I'll move uh, that the application submitted by Cushing Storage and Rentals LLC uh, seeking the creation of a uh, commercial industrial district uh, under Article 9 of the Land Use Ordinances 
we deem sufficiently complete to trigger the public notice and public hearing requirement in uh, the land use ordinance. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Jack? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much, John. Thank you. Thank you for your time. And uh, yeah, I think you were here for the, the end of the earlier one. We're looking to December 12th for the public hearing. We'll do them both at that same meeting. So um, okay. we'll start at 6 30. Uh, we'll probably Well, I don't know which one we'll begin with yet. Chip and I will talk about that. And um, I mean, we'll start. What's that? Ice bitter. Yeah. <laughs> um, but December 12th, anyway. And uh, Chip will get you more specific information as we get a little bit closer. Okay. That's the first thing we want to remember. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. Very much. Um, so we have uh, the minutes from October 10th. And good night. Good night. Thanks a lot. Um, I mentioned earlier, I had I had one word I wanted to insert, um, and that is, um, let's see, uh, the big white barn piece, mm -hmm. uh, second paragraph, the last sentence, it says the applicants are applying for a permit to put in a sink for those services in that mm -hmm. And I would just suggest Putting in the applicants are also applying for the same permit. And the reason I think that's important is that uh, there had been some conversations when they were talking about it, and it, and it, it was though they were putting it forward to the planning board as an application for a sink. And, and we corrected them a couple of times on that. And I just want to make sure it's clear in the beginning of that paragraph, there's discussion about how they're applying for a use. Mm -hmm. But I just wanted to make it crystal clear that you know, the application before us was not for it in sync. Okay. So I think also would help clarify. Yeah. And um, here you had. Well, I have a couple of things. I'm sorry. In the following paragraph, second line, where we talked about the administrative unable to locate some supporting documentation. I agree that there was, we couldn't locate the notice of decision, but we did locate there are two pages of meeting minutes from 2011 that yeah. are in the record. We did locate. So I, I don't mind putting keep meeting minutes in there under the IE, um, but you know, that's whatever people think. But I, I'm talking about meeting minutes from 2011. They're specifically, they were part of what we got. Um, yeah. Um, so, so you're you're suggesting just, just take out the decision from 2011. Take yeah. out the meeting minutes, right? Okay. Yeah. Because I think we've done. Really? Yeah. Well, it's some meeting minutes. Well, they weren't approved, right? They weren't approved. No, right. then like there was a lot of holes. Chip and I should have been talking about. Yeah, there's still still holes in that, but yeah, the immediate problem could be solved just by taking out the meeting minutes. Um, and then there's something under uh, the when we just put Main Street Solar. I don't know how complete you want the minutes to be. I mean, some people have different views, and but there was uh, at the meeting on October 10th. I did raise the question. I said I, I don't do not disagree with the position taken by our town's attorney, but looking to the future. I question whether we should consider recommending a change in the ordinance uh, in the case of, to coordinate with the solar ordinance. Since 
um, a solar uh, a solar project can now go through this detailed review process as mandated by the solar ordinance. The question is, should it all, in my mind anyway, should it also have to go through the, the, the uh, lengthy process of a rezoning uh, under Article 9? Or is there a way to uh, <laughs> uh, expedite it? So I, I did raise the issue. Um, and I, I think there was some, I think we talked about that a little bit. And I think said, there was some agreement that. Well, you, I, I don't want to characterize what you said, but you, Paul, you said that at least it's worth considering whether we should do something. Yeah. Um, to, that's my recollection. Yeah. And I, I think I think my, my thought at the time was that um, it would be helpful to learn from this process that we're in the middle of and when we emerge from this process that we're already committed to. Um, we could talk about whether we should make a change going forward. So, okay. so maybe maybe an additional sentence, Peter, that says so, something like, you know, the the, uh, the the board agreed that it might be appropriate to. Discuss revisions to the which, which coordinate Article Nine uh, with the Solar Ordinance. Um, please. Mm -hmm. Looks like you comment about that. Sure. I don't. I think it's great. Um, I think also as we as a community have entered into sort of this new territory that was um I'm still unclear like how the broader community feels about solar in the community. And I think that's a real difficult thing to gauge. I think you've got people who are for and against it, and some people have strong opinions and some people don't. Um, and I think it's an issue that you know, we voted on the solar ordinance because we really needed some kind of land use guidance to the solar projects, period. But we didn't really think it through, Peter, in that purest sense, as you're suggesting, from a, from a logistical perspective, like a you know, management perspective. But I also think that this process we're going through now, if indeed we do this correctly, will give us more insight into how the community feels about it and therefore should guide us in how the development yeah, will yeah, I think so. and, I think so. and how strict or loose certain components of the guidance will be, um, depending on the results of the community's opinions. And I think we should leave it to the community to sort of guide us in that, in that way a little bit more. So, um, um, did you write a sentence or you did yeah, not write it? I was writing what you guys were saying. Okay. <laughs> so, can you read it back to us? That the board agrees that it might be appropriate to discuss revisions to the LUO um, Article 9 coordinating with the civil ordinance. Actually, that, that might work. That doesn't say that it will be eliminated or not. Um, um, coordinating, coordinating with the solar ordinance would not be a bad idea under any Set of circumstances, I wouldn't think. Are you comfortable with that, Peter, or do you want to see something else? No, I think for purposes of the minutes, it's fine. I have my own views personally, which I can discuss in length later. There's no need to do that. <laughs> I, I just think I just can go put this in the minutes, <laughs> and it shouldn't go to last post minutes. But I don't know why if, if a major developer would go through our solar ordinance and survive, the idea they'd have to then go to a public a town meeting and a public vote. I wonder how many people would invest under those conditions. I really wonder that. Um, but anyway, that's, you know, so some communities, Peter, may have a requirement. That's their requirement in the town to go to public vote. I think they probably are likely to vote first, though. Yeah, that's how they do it. They yeah, start at least not. <laughs> yeah, they start with that and then they go through the. Yeah, that's how they do it. But I mean, what we're, what we're talking about here is only applicable to a very large scale solar development. We're talking your your you know residential use solar development budget. It's talking commercial scale. Yeah, talking commercial, but you know, it doesn't it doesn't take 
many solar panels to get to 5,000 square feet. Yeah, that's the, it doesn't take many. Once, once you folks clarify the, uh, the definition of structure and land use ordinance, right? Yeah. Yeah. It would be a good discussion for that. Okay. So anything else on the minutes? Any other comments or edits? That was the only side. That was the only side. Um, so with those couple of changes, um, we need a motion to move. We accept the minutes of October 10th as amended. Is there a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? <laughs> All those in favor? Jack? I'll abstain. I wasn't there. Okay. I stand to you. Okay. And uh, just a couple, just a couple of quick um, informational things. Um, I attended last night um, annually the select board. Uh, historically, has done a meeting where they've included all of the chairs of the various boards and commissions in town. And that meeting was held last night. It was a little bit different than the ones they've held in past years. Um, historically, again, what they've done is look for a little report out from each of the boards and commissions. And as you can imagine, that, that's a, a lengthy and tedious process. Uh, they didn't do it that way uh, this year, and they had an agenda with certain issues that they wanted to discuss and uh, get whatever input was appropriate from the various boards. They spent most of their time talking about um, open space and um, updating the open space plan. Uh, there was some discussion about how that um, uh, relates to the fair community work and, and so forth. Um, and they also talked a bit about um, implementing the comprehensive plan. And so the comp plan has um, within it um, summary sections that have all of the, you know, the various strategies and actions that are going to be taken under the under the comp plan and an assignment of who the you know the primary participants in, in that will be. Um, so a lot of the boards and commissions are implicated in the assignment column. And um, so the boards and commissions were charged with, you know, understanding their responsibility under the comp plan in terms of implementation. And uh, uh, not surprisingly, the planning board's piece of that is the biggest one. Um, so there are a lot of things that, that um, you know, over time, um, the planning board will have to take on principally with respect to ordinance for business of various sorts. Um, so that was a, a point of, of conversation. There likely will be a comprehensive plan implementation committee that is set up, um, I think, principally for the purpose of uh, just keeping track of progress on implementation of the comp plan and how that's going. You know. You know, to make sure that um, um, things that need to be done um, are being worked on by various parties and that so forth. That's something Eric is going to be working on in the near future to try to um, enlist some participation on that committee. Um, and then um, the other thing I wanted to mention was that. We uh, and you all, you all know this that legislation passed um, the LD two thousand three legislation concerning housing and, and so forth. We've had a little bit of discussion about that here. Um, there was money that was made available to municipalities through the ECB, and uh, I've been talking with Eric about that. Um, he made the application, and we actually have the money. It's not a huge amount; it's like ten grand, but we have that. And it is available. And um, I have um, I have found a company, a consulting company, 
that is knowledgeable about LD 2003 issues in the housing matter and likely would be a good candidate to do this work. Um, I talked to Eric about it uh, briefly because obviously he would have to get involved on the contract inside and so forth. Um, but uh, there is a company out there, and I think what Eric would like to do is put out an RFQ or request for qualifications uh, to this company and any others that we can think of. I don't think there are a whole lot of them out there. But can you name that company? Um, yeah, it was um, actually, you had given me Samantha Horn's card. And right. I, I, I spoke with her, and she had suggested this company. Okay. And uh, she told me that they are, uh, they work in this area, they know this issue, and um, it is um, North Star Consulting in New Gloucester. Okay. Uh, it's a, it's not a, it's not a big company. Um, but uh, anyway, so the way I left it with Chip was that um, I told him that I would I would mention this uh, tonight to all of you, and um, I'll get back to him uh, this week sometime about whether or not everyone is comfortable moving forward with the RFQ process. Um, it makes it makes sense to me, uh, particularly since they're you know it it seems to me that they know this issue, they know the ins and outs of it, and they likely will be following any possible changes that might be uh, proposed in the legislature. And I think that's entirely likely that something will happen uh, that modifies the provisions of LB 2003. And I think, you know, it would be real use of us plug into that to make us aware. So that's kind of where it stands. And the per and the and the vision would be that they would review our existing land use ordinance and, and incorporate right. changes into the right. proposed changes. Yeah, that, that would be their, their primary purpose. The product. They would give us a product right. that even therefore an act as FYI, Wayne, Wayne is going through the same process they identified a company out of New Hampshire just in the same thing. Right. Because they you know they have pitched that they are they know the 2013, they know what's yeah. going on. They have the intellectual property. They've worked with other towns, various sizes. So mm -hmm. we're not the only ones. What I would say is if you have somebody to grab it because every town is doing this right now. So yeah, it was looking, I know that you know Eric had done some work initially looking around to see who could do it. And I think he was he had been optimistic that you know, perhaps we could get Hayden Cobb or somebody like and, and that's not, I just don't think that's happening. No. And so, anyway, um, well, I told him I would have to roll the dice and wait to one year and then we know that already. already. They can't see the Yeah, in July, one rolls around and we got arrested for not having modified the year. true. No. <laughs> so we should all read you know, what they passed, what the legislature passed last uh, spring. I have a bunch of material I can share with everybody if you'd like. Uh, analysis and what they passed and from the Yeah, so I'll, I'll send you the pack. I'll send it uh, you know, Because I only see the media report, so it didn't really tell me enough. No. Yeah. Um, and it's um, you know, it's accessible off the, the legislative yeah. website. We could also invite um what's his name? Or could they run off the book? Yeah. Is that his name? Yeah, he, it was tapped. Hey, that was, 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 was yeah, yeah, but he followed it pretty closely. I don't know if he has much uh, there. He can give I, you an overview of what he means. I, I, not have an impact. I'm not, I don't know. I'm not sure about that. It's really complicated. It is. Well, they voted on that. I, I, that was a meeting thing. Mean, <laughs> uh, but how naive they <laughs> debate. I don't know. <laughs> don't write that. <laughs> Um, well, if there's got to be at least some public official out there. Okay, okay. never mind. Yeah. <laughs> Ask the assessors about the tax situation over the last year. You know, another another option might be um, uh, 
Um, if we get to the point where we decide that there is a company that might be able to help us make the revisions to the ordinance, we could ask them to come in. Yeah. And and talk about it. Well, I think it's important. One of my point was, of course, it's not sort of a joke, but I think it would be important. I think if they came in to pitch us, I think it's their idea or the developments what the law is yeah. and how it applies to our community specifically in some way. And, and yeah. if you read, as like you said, if you read what you heard in the newspaper, and apparently what are the officials with us, I wouldn't learn much. Right. Well, and it, you know, and it gets more complicated because if you, you know, if you read the legislation of 2003, which I've done several times, it's not all that lengthy, really, but it's, it's complicated in that it raises a lot of questions that are not answered. Yeah. And DECD has been charged with developing rules to implement this as well. And to my knowledge, they haven't done that yet. I have a right on that, which involves 2003 plus. They did the rules. A year later. What, Jack? They did rules. Did they, did they, did they finalize them? Yeah, last February. Oh, they did. Okay. I have it. Okay. All right. Well, if you want to put that all together, Chip, and send it to everybody, I've got that it. Would be able to, big to PDF file. Start. And in the meantime, I'll, I'll, um, can't have your turn to spin Chip and <laughs> puff notes. I'll, I'll talk further with, with Eric about the logistics of the RFQ and, um, it's important that we do whatever we're going to do fairly soon because time's time's still wasting, and it's supposed to be done by July one. But how much is the grant for? Ten thousand. You have to do it for ten thousand uh, dollars. Well, what we had talked about was an RMQ, which is different. Um, yeah, but I mean, is there a, is there a threshold? Or... Um, that is seventy, I think. Uh, Eric told me one of the magic numbers is 7,500. Okay. You can do pretty much anything under that and know what makes you go. Well, I mean, time is the essence. Yeah, so, yeah, you know, absolutely. Like, you know, both, yeah. both processes require 30 days and 30 yeah. days and 30 days. And, yeah. and, and then we'll have to, once they're done, we'll have to come to the board and then we'll have to go to the select board before the town meeting. So it really is getting compact. Yeah, and I did talk to Eric about that as well, about the time frame, and um, you know, his his response was that the the really critical piece of getting the warrant articles together and and doing it faster than has happened in in recent years has to do with the budget. The budget piece has to be done earlier. He said. Ordinance changes in a piece like this, um, there's a bit more flexibility and it can be bumped out, but we're still talking April to have it, you know, have it done basically. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. well, that's the If we're gonna do it, we have to do it quickly. We have to get a contract pretty quickly. Yeah. So that's all I've got. Yeah. 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 So I attended the November 2nd meeting, which was focused mainly on the basketball court and <laughs> the alternative sites, which included the fairgrounds and the school. Um, but they had to get on to the Facilities Committee at the school, um, which happened like last week, uh, they looked at it and said, no oh, thanks. Uh, oh, really? So yeah, they were they were looking at the the area of the, behind the middle school. If you drive all the way in through the parking lot to the very end, then uh, there there were several issues that the facilities committee was were uncomfortable with about that. So they they used it. Um, I mean, I think there were a number of people on that committee who were, were already kind of leaning more towards the fairgrounds. And it turns out they, um, they're not just thinking of it as a basketball court, but uh, 
as a multi use port, uh, like pickleball, among other things. Like, that would probably be the main other thing. Um, and yeah, the thought was that people would probably be more willing to come out and play there than behind the school, particularly if it was school hours. So, anyway, and that's where things sit at the moment. I guess they're meeting again in two weeks. No, thanks for doing that, Tom. We are taking a pass on our last meeting in November, correct? We're not going to have a meeting. Oh, um, yeah, that's like mm -hmm. the yeah the twenty eighth. Yeah, we we had talked about that. It's yeah the Tuesday after Thanksgiving weekend. Um, you don't have anything queued up. No, mm -hmm. no. So um, yeah, we will not plan to meet the 28th. And so our next meeting will be December 12th, which is the public hearing date. And then we won't have one. We won't have one on Christmas Eve or yeah. the day after Christmas or whatever it is. The 12th, or yeah, to be the day after Christmas. That blocks the day. It is. <laughs> One meeting. One meeting. And I will send to all of you that memo that I sent to Norwich about a possible projected schedule, just so you have the, mm -hmm. the benefit of that. Great. Okay, I think that's everything. Thank you all. We are adjourned. Mm -hmm. So you saw the board. George, 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 George. <laughs> yeah, George, George resigned because he moved to Mount Vernon. He has to move though. He just beamed up. Beamed up. He just he resigned before the house, I think. Well, what he told me was that they they have this property just over the line in right. Vernon. And they're going to build a new house, but in the interim, they were building a garage and they're going to live in an apartment over the garage until they build it. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, he submitted his revenue. Right. Oh, yes. Yeah. They, but that's the reason for it. Select board has to accept it. Right. Technically. Yeah. And they yeah. that, yeah. No, you can't. No, you can't. That's not. They moved them out of the told the volunteer they can't pull it. <laughs> I'm sure how that was with the year around the same you would be saying that. So there's a, so there's an alternative after the position available on the board. Is that what that means? Um, yeah, I mean, typically what it would mean. So we have two alternates of presidency, Brandon and John Mitchell, all of the guys. Oh. And so one of them, what historically, mm -hmm. they, one of those all would move up and then we would have. Brandon would seem to be excited about it. What? He would seem to be excited about it. Well, how many meetings have there been both? Yeah. Well, he, he can talk times. He could have it. And he did. Right. Yeah. And he changed the last thing when he couldn't vote. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Good. 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 Good.